I'll shut up now. I'm just excited. I we're in the vlog room. So guys, Pete Rose event. We're setting up the Pete Rose event. This is, I think it, I think we can both agree. This is probably the biggest thing we've booked. That was the lights went off. Yeah. I should have brought my charger, but I don't think it's gonna die. I was so unprepared. I, I brought gotta, my. I just gotta hope the camera doesn't die. I brought my um my camera and stuff, but I didn't think to bring my camera charger. How much? How but much I have an extra you? battery. How much battery is that? One hundred. I'm gonna make sure both of them was charged. Bro, this is one sick camera. Is this the same one he's gonna be letting me take one? Yeah, that's the same one. Dude, this one dope camera though. He was in Cincinnati last night. Cincinnati, Cincinnati, Cincinnati. So uh, what you doing, Ryan? Okay, this, I'm gonna end up dropping this again. Yeah, so you're gonna drop it. So I'm, this is what I'm doing. I'm holding it like this. Smart. Mm. I, mean, I thought everyone's just doing something. We're over here just standing, playing with cameras. <laughs> yeah, we should go ask if anyone needs help. I want. I should go over there and interview Mr. Gunn. Do it. I don't know if he wants to be on camera. Do it. I'm the interviewer. You're the cameraman. Now, since you have him, I'll be cameraman. <laughs> Anyway, can we go outside and vlog? Yeah. Should I get my, I don't know if I should get my camera wet. I might want to bring your phone with you too. No. You sure? Why, why, no one's going to steal it. You never know. As you leave a freaking $5,000 camera. <laughs> well, okay, yeah, you have one. There's another screw! <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah. This one's not mine. Hey, look, another one. <laughs> They're everywhere. <laughs> we're, we're collecting them. Collectors. It's still raining? Yeah, it's still um, raining. Can you do me a favor? Hold this. Don't drop it. Hi. Why are you that way? Weirdo. You sport that time. Is it coming to battery for the night? Face camp. <laughs> The bo look, the background focus on here is so good. I'm a go like, just in the background, just... Well, that's pretty nice, Ryan. Yeah. What? It's pretty nice. 69. That's nice. Ha! <laughs> so the fact that that is, it's still gonna be amplified, and you're still gonna hear it very, yeah. very well. Can you say test for me? Test, one, two, three, four. Okay. They didn't win their so, contest. So guys, he's here. He's here. He's, 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 where, wait, where's he at? Where'd he go? He's, in, he's talking with the baseball people right now. He's in the white cap and the flying green shirt. Sitting down? Yeah, sitting down in the very front with the, with the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's famous, but I don't know him, but it's so cool. <laughs> it's so cool because it's actually someone famous. Yeah. <laughs> I've met a bunch of NASCAR drivers, so that's the most fame I've gotten. I've met some football players. You know my dad actually met Bone Thugs and Harmony one time? Hey, met who? Bone Thugs and Harmony. Oh, really? You know who they are, right? No. Rappers? Anyway, I don't they were in around. Tennessee, and my dad was just so happy on the highway, and they asked where's Nashville. And so oh. he got to tell them where Nashville was. Wow. Short interaction, but still really cool. I got my handy dandy camera phone down there <laughs> save battery as much as you can just sit down why why not what else is there to do yeah oh hey i didn't get to do the magic show because look i got the little token so i can go right. how was the haunted house so good same look. as earlier yeah Look at this. Five dollars off for your morning gift shop. Oh, that's cool. It wasn't necessarily scary. Considering you've seen it before? Uh, well, actually, there was a lot more. I mean, there was more actors, like a whole lot more. There was, yeah. a lot, there was stuff. They changed a little, too. Some of the rooms were different. There was two rooms that looked a little bit different than what I remember. So, what is this thing for? I hate these kind of tripods. They're a pain to use. All right, guys. I got my, I got my phone set up. Yes, it's, we got like what thirty minutes. 
Not even what? that. Two minutes. <laughs> so guys, I got my phone set up. Well, I mean, recording. Well, I mean, they don't have anything set up. He hasn't done autographs yet. Which is what he's going to be doing. I think after the speech. Which is all they, they want. When he's up there, I'm going to have him selected. So that it will try to follow him. But I might move it to somewhere else. Well, considering it's so far away, it won't follow him. It's right here. Close spot. I'm wondering if I can put it on something, but I don't see anything where I could put it on. So I, I didn't. I thought that this tripod would be big enough for me and you to use it, but I didn't realize Guess not. that. Mm. Yeah. So same, but you know, I don't know how that's gonna work. I am cold too, but I wonder if I. Uh, no, I don't know. I guess I'll just have to leave it there. I don't have anywhere else to put it. Wait a minute. Bing, bing, bing idea. There? You see that box? Oh. Would that work? Let me check. Or that Is table? There in the box? No. Yes, but I can move it over a little bit and use the table. Oh, yeah, there's like, it's like compact. Okay. Well, do you think I can move it over a little bit and set it on the table? Do you think that would work? I'm afraid people would be mad because it's filming them getting stuff to eat. Yeah, I might. Uh, well, you figure it out, I guess. Mm -hmm. But they, I don't think anyone will be coming up here because until he's yeah. done. Yeah. So. That one's gonna be <sighs> Where's Ryan? Why isn't he over by the camera? What is he doing? He's not supposed to leave. The camera's sitting over here. Oh, there you are. Did what, what? Did it die? No, it's off. Oh, you did. You did that. Yeah, I turned it off. Oh, thank you. Because I was afraid it was gonna die. Oh yeah, I should have thought about that. <laughs> it can't see anything. People's heads. I hate that. People's heads are in the way. What you doing? Bro, why don't you just let me get that app on there? That's okay. Bro, I took like... I've already took up 32 gigs. That's not... That's like half. And how much pictures did you take? Okay. Here you go. This is him now. What else would you do? Uh, well, yeah, This is him now. Uh, address. Where is he? Excuse me? Ryan, 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 we don't have to pay. I just got my photo taken. We don't have to pay. So she said since you just tell her that we're also you're also working here? And she'll give you, she'll tell you to write it, your email down with your number on the back of the sheet instead of the whole sheet. What number? Um, your phone number. Oh, okay. Because they'll send it to you. And then I'll take a photo of you and send it to you. Okay, let's go do that. Huh? Let's go do that. Yeah. We'll do it now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
I like how you just can't even do anything yet because it's not time. It's not time, so I'm just stuck here just standing with a camera. Wind noise. Hey, we should make a thumbnail. <laughs> My thing's just sitting here. Yeah. I'm going to see how long I can record Mr. Gunn without him noticing. <laughs> My mother just texted me, let me know about when we have to go get you. <laughs> How's it stung? No matter how hard it stung in my hand, that I would lose my job. And so, Pete, you gave me my first paying job by watching you. <laughs> and, you know, I grew up face, catchers, gloved. It was thin. And no matter how hard it stung, I watched how you caught that ball. And that was a lesson I learned in life. That if I, if I was paid to do a job, no matter how hard, if it was my mistake or life's mistake, I stayed in the game. And you taught me that, Pete. And I'm sure I could look, at, look around the room, and everybody in this room has got a story about Pete Rose. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, and ladies, I love to teach young men, and ladies too. And by the way, I never knew how to like you. I did. I, I was on teacher's leave and they were amazed that I could hit the ball. But maybe I did learn something watching you. <laughs> but anyway, watch, and and there, the game of baseball is still out there thanks to you, Pete, and, and so many more. And you may not, you guys and ladies who play, play the ball, you might not end up being a Pete Rose. But I can tell you, no matter how hard that, that that ball hit my glove. I knew, I signed up for it. And if I was gonna stay in the game, and you'll learn the same, th same thing too, that you will take that hit and you will watch the people who do it well. You will you will learn from your mistakes, and I, and I thank you, Pete Rose. And it's my pleasure to introduce the greatest ambassador to uh, baseball is Pete Rose. And I thank you and God bless you. You know, uh, I was lucky enough to play the best record I got. I played in 1972 winning games. That's when I participated in the game. We won almost 2,000 games. Greatest catcher ever. I played with the greatest third baseman ever. I played with the greatest second baseman ever. And I played with the only Cuban to make the Hall of Fame, Tony Perez. That's the kind of company that I hung around with. Early in my career, I played with Frank Robinson. I played with Barry Larkin. What did they all have in common? They're all Hall of Famers. Oh, that's the kind of people that, that I like to hang around with. Guys who think about winning and guys who care about winning. That's what I was telling the young team today. The only reason you play is to win. You don't play for exercise. I don't think you do. You play tennis for exercise. <laughs> Go ahead. 1978, you had a 44 game hit streak. Second longest of all time. Uh, kind of take us through that and tell us if there was more pressure during that 44 game hit streak or trying to get 4192 or was there any pressure on, on either one of them? No, there's the 44 game hit streak, uh, if you want to call it pressure, you had to get hit every night. But that's what I was paid to do. I was paid to get hits and score runs. I just had to do it in, in almost two months in a row. And it was fun because uh, Ted Turner. <laughs> I can't tell you why, because the night that the streak ended, they, he had 26,000 people walk up to the game. Because in those days, the Atlanta Braves uh, were drawing about five or 6,000 a night. And all of a sudden, Ted got you know, 34,000. So he was rooting for the next night. He was pissed off at the pitcher who got me out. <laughs> Cost him money. Now, 41.92, uh, that was no pressure. 
because I had a whole month to get one hit. You know what I mean? So pressure is when you make three hits and you have one game left. That would be pressure. But uh, I, I thrived on pressure. I, mean, I, I had fun with pressure. Uh, playing in a World Series is pressure. You know, so, but you never get tired of playing in it. I only got, I only got to play in six. Uh, and I played 24 years. So I got to go to the World Series once every six years, which isn't bad. I think four times six is 24, isn't it? I don't know that in Tennessee, but I know in Vegas it is. <laughs> 44 game history, still everybody says 56 and DiMaggio is one of the unbreakable records. Uh, uh, early in your career, in, in the 60s, you were able to go to Vietnam and, and get to hang out with Joe DiMaggio. You got any stories from that trip? Well, yeah, I got one that's pretty funny, but it might get me kicked out of Tennessee. Uh, I get a call in 1967, that's a true story and I hope I don't offend anybody. And if I did, get your ass out of here. <laughs> I get a call from the State Department, a guy identifies himself, and he said, would you like to go to Vietnam? And I said, well, not necessarily, there's a war going on. <laughs> he said, well, Joe DiMaggio's going. And I said, I get to meet Joe? He said, you get to live with him for 23 days. I said, sign me up. So I flew to San Francisco, got on a world airliner. Joe and I, and Canigli Arrow, and a guy named Jerry Coleman, went to Saigon, they broke us up into two groups, Joe and I went south, they went north, we ended up meeting them on the Intrepid, which is an aircraft carrier in Stockton, New York. And if you don't know Vietnam, it's, it's so damn hot, you can't sleep, and it's a jungle. And all you can hear is boom, 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 mortars going off, we're on, up on this hill, a valley, a hill, and Joe says, man, I gotta take a shower. I said, Joe, we're not downtown Saigon, we're in the middle of the damn jungle. He said, I don't give a shit, I slept with Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> okay, we'll see if we can get you a shower. <laughs> so somebody had to get up, which was me, okay, and pour water into this canvas thing and pull the chain, and the guy underneath took a shower. I gave Joe DiMaggio a shower. <laughs> now, <laughs> the best way to screw Joe, Joe DiMaggio is he was a penis with a man hanging from him. <laughs> I don't know how that son of a bitch hit 56 in a row carrying that jump around. <laughs> from that day on, I envied Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> What are you letting uh, We're going to stay away from Joe. God bless Joe. He was the nicest guy in the world of those soldiers. I swear to God. Uh, how do you follow that? Oh, uh, late 70s. Uh, you left Cincinnati, became a free agent, uh, ended up going to the Phillies, and at that time became the highest play payer in, in all of sports. Philly it was a good team, but they had problems with the Reds. So if I leave the Reds to go to Philly, they don't have a problem with the Reds no more. And I liked Wazinski, I liked Boa, I liked Schmidt. You know, I hung around with those guys when they came in to play us in Cincinnati. Uh, I could have went to Ted Turner when he gave me a million dollars a year for four years. Then he come back and said, I'll give you the four million, but I'll give you 100,000 a year after you retire, every year until you die. Now knowing that son of a bitch, he'd have had me assassinated a year after I retired. <laughs> and the guy, in, the, the guy in, in Pittsburgh owned racehorses. And you guys know I like racehorses. <laughs> and I can tell you one thing, okay, this is the truth. If he had offered me a Kentucky Derby winner with balls that big, I'd have been a Pittsburgh Pirate. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy in Kansas City, he offered me oral wells. But the best offer I got, I think, 
I negotiated with Augie Bush, who was in a hospital for a hernia operation, and he offered me a Budweiser distributorship. But I didn't want to go to Rio. Because there were five years, we went to two World Series, and we, which is a long time. <laughs> which is a long time. So it worked out okay for me. And I came back, and I went to Montreal. I had to go up there and speak French for four months. All he could must say my ass. <laughs> And I went back to Cincinnati as a player manager. And <clears throat> when I went back to Cincinnati in August of 84, I really deserved the opportunity to play the next year. And I don't forget, I'm 44, 45 years old. But from the time I got back to the last seven weeks of the season, I hit 365, which is a pretty good average. And I played every day. So I kind of earned the opportunity to play in 1985. If I'd hit 175, I wouldn't have been able to take a roster spot. So I kind of earned that opportunity. And, you know, in 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, uh, I worked for Marge Schott. You, know, you all know who Marge Schott is? When I worked for Marge, she was the only member of the organization that had facial hair. <laughs> Who would be your all-time trifecta? Um, I bet when I was out of bed trifecta. Well, secretary up there. You know, there's so many good horses, so many good jockeys, and I bet on so many bad horses, so many bad jockeys. You know, I, I bet on duck one time and some is drowned. <laughs> Now, I grew up, Jeff, will you sit down? You make me nervous. That boy's trying to raise money for his operation here, I'm telling you. Anyway, I'm a, I'm a young kid. And if, if you never heard of Don Zimmer, he was one of the best baseball people that there ever was. They called him Popeye. And we grew up in the same neighborhood. He was a little older. Our dads were teammates. And his dad was the biggest gambler in the world, but the nicest guy. And I'm 10, 11 years old. He said, one day he said to me, you know, Pete, I had a dream last night about white hats and black hats, and round hats and square hats. And I went to work and a guy gave me a new Cincinnati red hat. And as he did every day, he ate lunch, he went 10 miles east to River Downs Racetrack and he opened up the program and number one was top hat. Now, if you know anything about gambling, you dreamed about hats, I gave you a new hat in 1950, which is a big, big bet, okay? And they're, go they're going two turns that are out of the gate, they're coming down, they're coming to the home stretch. The last jump, a 50 to one shot beat top hat. And Doug was the same. I said, Doug, who won the race? He said, sombrero. <laughs> So if he'd have been Spanish, he'd have won $50,000. That's a hard look, son of a book, right there. Wow. Hey, we got two uh, auction items tonight that we're going to auction off during this. Uh, one of them Jeff just brought up, and he said it's the only known money in the world to exist from a Herbie Nugent ticket sale. So we got a Herbie Nugent. One hundred dollar bill here. Would anybody like to bid on that? Do we have any bid? I'll bid two hundred. Pete Rose, two hundred dollars on it. Anybody else? Jeff bids five hundred. We got five hundred for a Herbie Nugent one hundred dollar bill sign. Got five hundred in the back. BB Brown in here, is he? I'm not. I'm not an auctioneer, but we'll get this thing going here. Got five hundred in the back. Five hundred, Jeff Lowe. 500 Jeff Lowe. Anybody else want in on this Herbie Nugent $100 bill? Well, maybe I'll tell him who the hell Herbie is. Yes. <laughs> Jeff, you got any Herbie Nugent stories? Well, that was a failure. $500 right here. And those are cool socks, man. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Did you buy a new? I got them in my uh, stocking last year. Wife got them for me. Wow. 
51 years old. I'm going to be coaching at about 70, Pete. I got a seven-month-year-old son right there, so. Wow, it still works, huh? That's right. <laughs> Let's do a little word association, please. I'm going to throw a name out there and you tell us a sentence or two about him. Sparky Anderson. Uh, Sparky. Most street smart guy I've ever met in my life. What Sparky Anderson did, what you need to do as a coach or a manager, uh, is you have to understand your people. Everybody is different. Everybody has something that they can do. And you got to get them to do that on a daily basis. He didn't treat me like he did Johnny. He didn't treat Johnny like he did Joe. He didn't treat Joe like he did Tony. You know, so, but he was the best. He was the best at treating people. And he, he always told me, think about this. And I think it's true. There's three ways you can treat a person. Pat him on the butt, kick him in the butt, or leave him alone. Mm. How else can you treat a person? You don't kick the guy and he's patted. You don't pat the guy and he's kicked. And it's up to you as the boss. You're the one that knows how, what makes the guy tick. And Sparky was the best at that. That's why we had one set of rules, okay? Everybody, same set of rules. No special things to anybody. Oh, there was free training. You know, Sparky, uh, would leave me off, leave me off on a Saturday if the basketball tournament was on, because he knew I wouldn't have bet on the son of a bitch. <laughs> he would let Johnny uh, and Joe they let them off a Saturday to go play golf. He let Tony he'd get off on a Saturday to go fishing. And I was going to go to spring training go fishing. That was Tony Perez. I met Tony Perez. I've been knowing Tony Perez. Think about this, anybody. You, you, you know anybody for 61 years? That's how long I've known Tony Perez. When I signed a baseball contract two days out of high school, and I went to Geneva, New York, to play for the Geneva Reds, there was a second baseman on the team at the time named Antonacio Perez. That was Tony Perez. Okay? He was the second baseman. I moved him to third and put me at second. I went to lunch with him about three weeks ago in Cincinnati. And I sat there for three hours. That story is it's the truth. Hey, kid, shut up. <laughs> it's your turn, buddy. Wait 70 years. We're, we're playing at Riverfront Stadium. This is a true story. And Tony goes in, and he's got to use the bathroom. And I swear to God, ladies and gentlemen, he took a dump. <laughs> And the turd was that long. <laughs> not this long, not that long. It was this long. A clubhouse guy, Bernie Stowe, put a side up on the commode. Please don't flush world's longest turd. <laughs> Put it in there. We had other commodes. Now, hopefully we're all going to go to the bathroom tomorrow. Okay? That's, that's the way it's supposed to go. Can you imagine Tony Perez sitting there like this and doing it turn back <laughs> How still did he have to be? <laughs> like that, he's going to break that son of a bitch off. <laughs> think about that. When you go to the bathroom tomorrow, you're all going to think about Tony Perez. <laughs> God bless him. Well, number two on the list is Tony Perez. <laughs> Johnny Bench. Johnny Bench. Greatest pitcher ever. Um, he come up in 68. I was rookie year in 63. Helms was rookie of the year in 66. Uh, Johnny came up in 68 and was rookie of the year. And uh, he, he was a one-handed catcher, if you know what I mean. Most catchers catch with two hands, but he has such big hands, he could catch with one hand. And uh, he really become the best catcher. Maybe ever. I don't know who would be a better catcher than Johnny Bench. And I got to play with him a long time. The only problem with Johnny is he, he couldn't run. He was a slow poke. If he's on first, 
you hadn't hit a home run to score that Sunday. <laughs> we used to have an old, old saying it's in baseball, you know, don't carry that piano around when you're running. And that, that means you can't run. But not only Johnny, Johnny didn't carry it around, he stopped to play this song. <laughs> you can't do it. Who's the next guy? Mike Smith. Greatest third baseman ever. Mike Schmidt, greatest third baseman ever. And, uh, I, 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 <laughs> That's the cutest kid in the building. But do me a favor, son, shut up. <laughs> Just kidding, buddy. He was gonna kick my ass. Huh? Mike Schmidt was a, not only a home run hitter, but a great fielder. Uh, it's like this. Okay, the greatest hitting third baseman ever. These are all my opinions, okay? The greatest hitting third baseman ever was a guy named George Brett. The best defensive catcher ever was a guy named Brooks Robinson. The best overall catch, uh, third baseman ever was Mike Schmidt. Okay? Not many. You know, I, I played against some good catchers. I played against Yogi Berra. You know, uh, I played against some great players. Clemente, May, Aaron. And for you smart asses, I didn't play against Babe Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> However, I believe that Babe Ruth is the greatest player in the history of baseball. And I'll tell you why. Because I don't think Michael Jordan could do what he did. I don't think Tom Brady could do what he did. I think Wayne Gretzky could do what he did. Babe Ruth, after 1919, when they had the Black Sox scandal, would go to this town or that town or this town, and they'd sell out every game they played. So it enabled the baseball franchises to grow and mature and become good franchises. I don't think Michael Jordan could save basketball. He's the greatest. He's a goat. Brady's a goat. Gretzky's a goat. But I don't think he could save your sports like Babe Ruth did. And when I first came up, I used to sit next to our announcer, whose name was Wade Hoyt. Some of the old timers remember Wade Hoyt. And he's a Hall of Famer, and he played with Babe Ruth. So I know more Babe Ruth stories and Ty Cobb stories than anybody, because I'm, I'm a young 20 year old sitting on the plane, just talking to Wade, asking him stories about the old timers. Because when I was a kid, that interested me. I wanted to know about those guys. And I would have loved to play with Babe Ruth. You know, uh, well, if I did, I sure in the hell wouldn't be here today. <laughs> I met, I met several, several years ago, I met his daughter up in Cooperstown. Don't get alarmed. <laughs> I'm not in Cooperstown. I'm just not allowed to hang. <laughs> his daughter, Claire, was, 88 at the time, she walked three blocks down the street to tell me that her dad would appreciate the way I played. And I'm gonna tell you something. Talking to Babe Ruth's daughter, that's the most nervous I ever been in my life. And I've been in front of federal judges before. <laughs> she, she just died a couple years ago. I'm saying to myself, that's Babe Ruth's daughter. She can't be Babe Ruth's daughter. I hope they say that about my kid. That's Babe Ruth's daughter? How can he have a daughter? I just never understood that. I was in awe and I met seven presidents. <laughs> seven presidents. You know, presidents, just another guy. Puts his pants on the same way I do. Just a couple of them had their pants off a lot. <laughs> Come on, Bill. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Are you scared over there? I'm not going to bring it. Bring it. Curse you. I have a curse. You have it. I was at the turn and said penis. That's all I said. I was at the All Star game in the, in the, or the World Series game in Atlanta when they brought the All Century team on the field. Yeah. Seemed like what was a 10 minute standing ovation that night. You know, Hank Aaron played for the Braves. Did he? Did he say anything to you he after that? He's right next to me. He's right next to me, and these people kept clapping. And he says, 
what's wrong with you? I said, what do you mean? He said, how do you get a bigger hand than I do in Atlanta? I said, just get suspended and stay away for 10 years. <laughs> I got it. It's true. I got it. If, if you want to know how long it was, for you guys that are married, when you get home from work, sun, Monday, go in the kitchen while your wife's cooking and clap for nine minutes. That's how long the ovation was when I got 4192. Now, that may not sound like a long time, but none of, none of you guys will be able to to stand up nine minutes and clap for your wife. I'm telling you, I'll bet you. <laughs> <laughs> but that was the only time I've ever was on the baseball field uh, and didn't know what to do. See what happens in there, and, and I did it, so I know what I know how to explain it. <clears throat> the first five six minutes are great. You know, the players come out, my sons come out. Marge brings the Chevrolet in. I told her I wanted a Porsche. <laughs> Excuse me, a damn Corvette. <laughs> and for five, six minutes, you, you know, you're enjoying it, the sand ovation and stuff like that. Then when you get to seven and a half, eight and a half, you start thinking about everybody that's not there that's responsible for you being there. In my case, my dad, my uncle, my little league coaches, my high school coaches, they were all gone. And that's what brings tears to your eyes. Okay, not that ovation, just your mind, what you're, what you're thinking about. And that's what happened to me at first base. I, never, I didn't know what to do. That's the first time I was ever on a baseball field, and I didn't know what to do. So I just had to ride with the wave. But see, in that situation, ladies and gentlemen, you never know what's going to be the reaction of the, of the fans. Just like tonight. Hey, you gave me a standing ovation. I appreciate it. But I didn't expect it. Because you never know the pulse of the fans. Okay, good, bad, or indifferent. But when I played in Shea Stadium, in the 73 playoffs, they're throwing, a guy threw a whiskey bottle at me from the third deck. Uh, yeah, it was empty. That New York fan, he drank it before he threw it. And one time, playing in Chicago, and a guy in the bleachers in left field, I don't know, this guy's a dumbass because he threw a crutch at me. How do you throw a crutch at somebody? How the hell do you get home? I'm playing right field there. This is true. And a guy shot me right here with a paper clip. Okay? It bled for three innings. Okay? If I'd been like that, it would put my eye out. I'd only got 3,000 hits. <laughs> Just like Joey Gallo of uh, the Yankees now. The guy struck out 213 times this past year. I told the newspaper guy the other day, I said, Jesus Christ, I said, Ray Charles wouldn't strike out 213 times. <laughs> <laughs> Ray can't see the curveball. <laughs> or the fastball, or the slider, or the screwball, or the knuckleball. I got, I got 64 hits off of Phil Negro from Atlanta. I got 44 hits off his brother. I got over 100 hits off the Negro family. That's a 40th of all my hits. If she'd had five sons, I'd have got 5,000 hits. <laughs> Come on, Mrs. Negro. Give me some help. You running out of ammunition? Oh, no. You get that hit. I've got the picture. You standing on first, and uh, Steve Garvey's there, and he's laughing out loud and he comes over and says something to you. What did Steve Garvey well, I say? I can't tell you. It's, 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 I get barred out of Tennessee. You know, I tell you exactly. I got, I'm going to use one, one curse word tonight. This is Steve Garvey. If you see the picture, I'm standing on first base and he comes up and he's laughing his ass off. Okay, I look back at him. He looked at me and said, that's just an eight minutes of ovation. He said, Pete, what the fuck did you do? <laughs> you didn't know I just broke the record, I guess. <laughs> but Steve, one time in, in his, with the Dodgers, this is true. I'm not lying about this. Steve had a, he had a hell of a summer one year with the Dodgers. He knocked up three girls in one summer. <laughs> I told him, I said, Steve, 
I bet on the oh. Breeders' Cup you won the summer. Oh, no, for God. But he's a good guy. Plus his wife in the same year. How do you knock out four girls in one year? How do you have time to play first base? It's like Groucho Mark said, he said, I like my cigar, but I take it out every once in a while. <laughs> that little blonde over there is having more fun than any three people in this place. All right, Jeff Lowe uh, has asked me to give a couple of baseballs that you signed earlier out tonight. Do we have uh, Rob Norman? Is Rob Norman in the room? Stand up, Rob. Nice Jeff, nice Jeff, he didn't show up. <laughs> we ain't giving him no damn balls. How about Troy Martin? <laughs> Do we have Rob Norman or Troy Martin? He's my uncle, I should know where he is. <laughs> well, we got a couple baseballs for him there. We had a story to go along with those. Uh, but, uh, is Barack Obama here tonight? <laughs> <laughs> we talked about the Negro Brothers earlier. Uh, who's the toughest pitcher you ever faced? Uh, Sandy Koufax. I couldn't hit him. I couldn't hit him with that chair you got. <laughs> no one could hit him. He was good. He had a great curveball and a great fastball. Uh, I, just, I, I couldn't hit him. I hit 175 off of him. Mm. You know, my Gibson, I hit 307 off Gibson. I had 340 off of him. And that's how much could throw a ball through a car wash and not get it wet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they talk about guys, you know, guys throw so hard that they pictures throw so hard. And the guy asked me here, he says, well, what do you think you hit if you were playing today? I said, I don't know. I'd probably hit 240, 242. He said, why, the pictures are that good? I said, no, I'm 80 goddamn years old. <laughs> Pete, the 90 Reds, the 90 Reds win the World Series, uh, a team that you had a lot to do with. In, in my opinion, you constructed that World Series team. Uh, tell us a little bit about that team and uh, some of the players on that ball club. Well, I finished second four years in a row, and they had four guys. And by the way, that team made me good. You know, because when the World Series is going on up at USP Marion, that's a prison, by the way. I was in. Not what's going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. And they said, man, this guy. I said I had that. A team last year, brother. I know who's I know who's ticking, I know who's pinch hitting, I know who's pinch running. But they had four guys I didn't have. They had Glenn Briggs, Hal Morris, Billy Hatcher, and uh, Randy Myers. If I'd had those four the years I finished second, I'd have won the pennant every year. They were just that much better. That was Lou Pinella's team. Uh, a lot of the players on that team were my players. You know, I brought Sable up, I brought Larkin up, I brought Paul O'Neill up, I brought Browning up, uh, I brought Milner up, I brought Greedis up. I had air enthusiasm. Okay, you need veteran players to be pinch hitters. Because it's hard for a young player uh, to be a good pinch hitter. Because you need patience and you got to be aggressive. All young players are aggressive, but they're not patient. And uh, that's, that's the way you manage your baseball team. Give him a chance to play. You know, you can't tell a player he's, he's too too good often enough. The more you the more you get on a player's uh, bound, bandwagon, uh, the better he's going to be. What are you cleaning up? Oh, you're back here with your thing. We've got some good raffle things going on. Are we going to do some raffle tickets now? Let's draw what's, some out. What's, what's the, the one thing we're putting up for option? Oh yeah, we have a uh, we have a dinner for four with Pete Rose. It's going to be in Las Vegas through the week at the Palm. Uh, Jeff, do you have a bid you want to start that out at? 
Jeff's left with those other two guys. Dinner for four. Dinner for four with Pete Rose at the Palm in Las Vegas. Do I have owned and bid? Let's start that out at four thousand dollars. We won't get mad if you bring five. Okay. <laughs> we got four thousand dollars in the back. Oh, four hundred. Four hundred dollars. We got four hundred. Is there a date? No, no date on it. Any, it has to be through the week you in have Vegas at the Palm. You decide the date. Yeah. You I'm not going to say a damn jet for you. <laughs> I do this all the time, and we get eight to ten thousand. Thousand dollars. Got a thousand dollars right here. One thousand dollars. I ain't going to dinner with anybody for people for a thousand dollars. Dinner with the Hit King at the Palm in Las Vegas. Four people. You pick the four people. You get your plane tickets. Go to the Palm. You get to eat dinner with Pete hey, Rose. I'm not getting any of this. This is all going to what we're here for. Yeah, tonight all of this money is going to the baseball team tonight and Coach Douglas. This is helping them out. This is for a great cause. New coach trying to get the program up and going. And uh, all this will be for the CCHS baseball team. So right now we're at $1,000, dinner with Pete Rose. Looking for Jeff back there. I know he's gonna go more than 1,000 on this. Three, you got 3,000, Jeff Lowe, 3,000, dinner with Pete Rose, 3,000, $3,000. Anybody beat $3,000? Anybody top $3,000, dinner with Pete Rose at the Palm in Vegas? You get it get an autographed jersey too. Autographed jersey, dinner for four. Four thousand. Got four thousand dollars in the back. Four thousand dollars. Four thousand dollars. Autographed jersey with Pete Rose, dinner for four at the Palm. Baseball. You get a baseball. And a baseball. Autographed baseball, Pete Rose. Baseball jersey, dinner for four at the Palm. You get to sit and talk to my girlfriend. Google that. Just Google that, okay? Four thousand. Got four thousand right now. Looking for five. Forty-five hundred. Hey, buddy, you better hold it. You, you, you almost got there. You, you got your hand this far in the your hair. That's a good deed. Four thousand. Looking for forty-five hundred. Got four thousand. Looking for forty-five hundred. Dinner with the hit king. How many people you need to go to get the bid up? Do you need seven people? What? 4,500? 4,500 looking for 5,000. Got 4,500 in the back Start looking for 5,000. Five shit, okay? <laughs> Go for four to five, five to six, six to seven. That's right. Looking for five, looking for 5,000. We're at 4,500 looking for 5,000. 45, got 5,000, 5,000 looking for six. There you go. 5,000 looking for six. We're at 5,000 now looking for 6,000. Dinner with a hit key, autographed jersey, baseball, and you get to meet his fiance. Is this side? Fiance? Yes. <laughs> did, you, did you not hear what I said? I'm goddamn 80 years old. <laughs> what happened to this side of the room? Did, is, it, is it the last speaker not on on this side of the room? <laughs> We're at five, looking for six. We're at five thousand, looking for six. Five thousand, looking for six. Jeff, where are you? Once in a lifetime opportunity, folks. Six thousand, got six thousand in the back, looking for seven. We're at six thousand, looking for seven. Got six thousand in the back, looking for seven. Yeah, quit bidding, Jeff, because nobody's going to bid it against you. <laughs> six thousand, looking for seven, right now. Bid in the back, right. Six thousand, looking for seven. Got seven thousand. Uh, 7,000 looking for eight. We're at 7,000 looking for eight. 7,000 looking for eight. $7,000 right here looking for 8,000. 7,000 looking for eight. 7,000 going once. Seven's okay. 7,000 going twice. Sold $7,000. Dinner with a hit king. Let's raffle something off here. Did the guy bid $7,000? You know him? Yes. Is he honest? Yes. <laughs> no, we're going to give the AR-15 first. AR-15. Winner of this gets an AR-15. A gun? Yes. What the hell do you want to give a gun away for? It's, it's not mine. I'm just... 
40 men roster and we're playing a game and my day is done I can go do my running go take a shower and get well guys it's the end of the video subscribe like comment I'm gonna put this on YouTube oh you will yeah I'm not a page on video yet um I mean, the event. I mean it's not like anyone watches the event anyway. shut up the event <laughs> I'm talking about the event uh, okay so yeah <laughs> it's, not like, it's not like anyone watches shut up Ryan no one watches yours no one watches yours. <laughs> You're so just salty, I get more views. Subscribe for more content.